But learning to read is a different story. And I, I just want to say it's not th that there are many other things that children aren't resilient to. We all know the traumatic incidences, the drive-by shootings in our schools, the, all these other incidences are terrifying, and they do. They're not resilient to that. But the one that counts in schools is learning to read books. And that is something children are not resilient to. It entirely depends on the environment in which children are raised. If you want to learn to read, if you're a child, there have to be books around you, or newspapers, or blogs, something you want to read. If you grow up as a child, and many do, including in our own country, where there is no print around, reading is a completely foreign concept. The mountain climber Greg Mortensen, I'm sure you've read about him, failed in his attempt to scale K2, which is the second highest mountain in Himalayas, and he nearly died. He was nursed back to health by a tribal chief high up in those mountains, 15,000 feet high. And Mortensen wanted to repay the chief, and he asked, what can I do? And the chief said, build schools. The chief said, I have a Koran here, but I can't read a word of it. And as you all know from Three Cups of Tea, that's exactly what Greg Martinson did. And he's built a whole batch of schools way up, first in Pakistan and now in Afghanistan. Now in my case, me, this guy, <laughs> both of my parents went to Ivy League schools. My father was a noted nuclear physicist, and then after World War II, he helped to found the science of biophysics with Watson and Crick. Clearly, a person like that, <laughs> a child like I was, who hears intellectual conversations every night, I still remember those words, ribosomes and nucleotides, <laughs> were magical words, is different from a child who doesn't have any kind of experience like that. And the trouble is that our schools do not correct that difference. They actually reinforce this class separation. No Child Left Behind virtually dictates that every first grade textbook, every second grade textbook, that is used in reading has to be at the same level. Now that is going to absolutely advantage the child that already knows how to read and absolutely disadvantage the child who doesn't. And that's what happens. It's what we've all seen in our schools. That's probably why we're sitting right here or going to this conference. Schools are really a manufactured critical transition point at which this natural cognitive process I've been telling you about, the imagination, the curiosity, the, alert, the knowing how to speak, how to communicate, is suddenly based on learning how to read books and that has nothing whatsoever to do with the capabilities of these children. It doesn't. Now you're asking, perhaps, what can after school do to address this? And the key to so many of our wonderful after school programs that you've already seen pictures of is that we can provide for children opportunities to do things they want to, to learn skills that they're interested in learning, to give them the opportunity to practice, to achieve success, mastery in something that's their own.
might want to become a disc jockey. You might want to become a dancer. Chess, there's all kinds of things that children can do that we can help them do and let them be successful at rather than those D's and F's. You didn't get it. You don't know how to read D, F, D, F, D. The importance of what I just said cannot be stressed enough. If a ch child, a youngster, learns to do something well, can show it off. Kathy Mostovoy, she did an evaluation of her after school middle school programs, asked what the kids most like. You know what they said? They most like to perform. They like to show off their uh, band playing skills. That makes them feel good about themselves. Our new president, you might remember in his campaign, noted on a number of occasions how he would see kids in elementary school excited, wanting to learn, bright, starry-eyed, and then by later on that seems to have been extinguished. They're dead. He said, what's going on? Well, we know what's going on. We know exactly what's going on. This natural curiosity, their will, their want, desire to master and become experts at things has been wiped out. We need to take children as they are, with their own interests, their own talents, their own curiosities, their desires to learn new things, and reinforce that. We need to restore children their sense of self, their ability to achieve, and their freedom to imagine, to dream up new mountains to climb. As I understand it, the Apache program, which is the basis upon which every computer from every different company in every different place in the world can access websites everywhere else, began when a young man by the name of Brian Bellendorf went to Berkeley in 1991 and got bored. Because there wasn't anything in school about the exciting things that were happening on internet out there. And he got together a group of eight like-minded people who trusted each other, and they began putting patches together, and that grew to a thousand people who trusted each other, and this gigantic leap in technology took place. Now this internet is critical to what I'm talking about because a lot of this learning about the world and children are way ahead of us on the internet. Isn't that true? Don't our kids know how to use computers a lot better than we do? It's going to take place through internet, through their looking up foreign countries, looking at different cultures. In our understanding, the motivation and interests of children we work with, it becomes important not to impose particular subjects on them. That's what after school has to remember. We don't make a list of the skills they need to learn. We let them make a list of skills they want to learn. Not how we think, how they think. Not what excites us, but what excites them. The world-renowned uh, behavioral psychologist Csikszentmihalyi has analyzed what constitutes the most meaningful experiences and satisfying things that people can do, and he calls them flow. He says how active and alert we feel depends a lot on what we do. This is clear to all of us. And these feelings become more intense if what we're trying to do is reach skill levels that are difficult but not unachievable. If we fail to do this, we become discouraged. And eventually, we don't try anything. 